Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a template using Excel that will guide you and help you save time during a financial accounting exam. This template is designed to be helpful for business school or university students with an upcoming financial accounting exam and is not meant to be used by entrepreneurs to do their accounting. Maybe in a future video, I'll address that and create a template that might be actually useful for entrepreneurs to do their accounting. But as of now, this template is meant entirely for academic purposes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the template by yourself before the exam so you can save as much time as possible. But after watching this video, if you'd rather purchase this template and save even more time, then you can find that in the description below. Okay, let's dive in. So in any typical financial accounting exam, you might have a question which involves journal entries, right? You might be asked to do journal entries and then eventually using those journal entries, you might be asked to create financial statements at the end, right? So you might have to create your profit and loss statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement at the end. So how to create these financial statements automatically is what is going to be covered in the first half of this video. And later we'll also look at how to handle different types of depreciation or different types of inventory management. And we'll focus on creating templates which calculate these automatically for us. Let's start with preparing journal entries and creating financial statements. First, you might be provided with the debit and credit balances of certain accounts at the beginning of the period, or you might even be provided the entire balance sheet, right? So the first step would be to get this input. Okay, for that, we are going to use this before sheet, okay, which I've designed to capture most of the common accounts in a balance sheet. The cells which are expecting your input are highlighted here in blue, right? Do not edit any of the other cells. You will have to provide a provision for all the most commonly used accounts, okay? And also some room in case there are accounts which are not that commonly used. Like for example, I call them other current assets or other non-current assets or other current liabilities so that you have some wiggle room to add extra accounts. So the first step would be to create a sheet where you can input these values for these accounts okay, at the, from the beginning of the period. If you don't have the balances of accounts from the beginning of the period and all you have to do is do your journal entries and then create the financial statements at the end, okay, then you can skip this step or you can just leave the sheet blank. Ideally, you should create a check every time a balance sheet is involved so that the total assets is equal to the total sum of the liabilities and shareholders equity. The next step would be to prepare your journal entries. Okay, so for that, you would ideally have to create a sheet like this, where you have all the common account names here again on the left, which are similar to the what you see here in the before sheet. Okay, and then you will have to provide some cells where you can take your debit and credit entries for the different journal entries, right? You can also provide additional guidance so that it's easier when you actually have to do it. Okay, you can mark what type of account these are. Okay, for example, cash is an asset, whereas allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset. Okay, hence the XA and accounts payable is a liability, for example. And you can also speed up the journal entries by specifying if these accounts are a debit or a credit balance account, right? So for example, Cash is a debit account because when cash goes up, it's being debited, okay? When cash goes down, it's being credited, right? So in a nutshell, whenever these accounts increase, you can look at this column for guidance and see, okay, whether you should debit or credit it, okay? When those accounts have to decrease, you will have to do the opposite of what's specified here. Preparing such a guidance can help you save a lot of time when you're actually in the exam hall, right? In my template, you can already see that I've done this for the most commonly used accounts. Okay, you can pause the video if you wanna create your own template and you can note down what debit and credit accounts are. But fair warning, you should understand the basics of debit and credit in order to use a template like this and automate the process, right? Next, along the columns, you would have to create different sections that can capture the different journal entries separately, okay? Why do we do this separately? So that at the end, if you want to check something or if you made an error and if you want to track back, it helps you 
to identify where which journal entry might have been the problem right so I've numbered them one two three four you can call them whatever you want okay so the debit and credit columns I've given them in separate colors okay so it's easier to identify where the debit numbers goes and the, where the credit numbers go and then finally you will have to create a total column okay which adds up all the debits and credits mentioned in these columns here the way I did it in this particular template is if it's a debit account okay I added all the debits and subtracted the credits from it if it's a credit account I added all the credits and then subtracted the debits from it the reason I do it this way is that when I go back to the financial statements okay I can add or subtract depending on what type of accounts they are for example I can specify that my accumulated depreciation for example has to be subtracted from my equipment value in order to calculate the net equipment because here in my formula you can already see that I subtract line 15 from line 14 which means I want the value of my accumulated depreciation to be positive when I take it to my financial statement so that's the reasoning behind why I do debits minus credits for a debit account and credits minus debits for a credit account Ideally, you will also have to implement checks, okay, so that for each journal entries, okay, you see that the sum of the debits is equal to the sum of the credits, okay, and you would do that for the total too, right? Regarding the account names for the most commonly used ones and also for the not so commonly used ones, you manually enter these account names in only one sheet, okay? I've done that in the journal entry sheet and then in the before and the after sheets which have the financial statements okay you always copy them using a formula you link them to the journal entry cell right so whenever you have to make changes in the names of accounts for example instead of other current assets you want to say prepaid insurance for example okay you all you have to do is type prepaid insurance here okay and then if you had linked it to the other sheets you can automatically see here that it gets replaced to prepaid insurance okay so I've provided some cells in orange here you can rename them to whatever account you want okay this offers the degree of flexibility here and finally when you have to create a cash flow statement using the direct method okay the direct method as in it tracks your cash inflows and cash outflows ideally you would want to specify if these cash transactions are for operating activities or investing activities or financing activities okay so every time there is a cash transaction okay which will be recorded here on line 5 okay you might want to create some cells which specify whether those cash transactions are for operating activities investing activities or financing activities okay you can create a drop down box with an already specified list like I did or you can just put O or I or F whatever you prefer and then use a lookup function in this case the horizontal lookup okay to capture the cash values from line 5 and take it back to the cash flow statement so far we've been focused on capturing the input data and preparing the journal entries right the next step would be to create the financial statements at the end of the time period right okay for that we are going to try to automate it as much as possible so you would have to create an after sheet which shows the financial statements at the end of the time period you'll have to begin with the income statement or also known as the profit and loss statement which captures all the accounts that should be present in the income statement how do you do that for example sales revenue you can see that the account name is linked to the journal entries account name right so if the, if the name changes there it also changes here how do you get sales revenue okay you go back to the journal entries you link it to the total of the sales revenue account here okay so it captures all the journal entries specified in this account okay and you would repeat that for all the other accounts for sales discounts for cost of goods sold salary expense and so on okay and finally you would calculate the net income using all those account values the next step you should create a template for the statement of retained earnings what does that look like you have a beginning balance for your retained earnings the net income you would take it from here 
If you're paying dividends, you would see that again from the journal entries for dividend expense, okay? And the retained earnings ending balance is calculated by beginning balance plus the net income minus the dividends, right? Where do you get the beginning balance from? If at all there is one, you will link that to the retained earnings in your before sheet, okay? You capture that value from there. The next logical step is to create the balance sheet, which has the same structure as in the before sheet, right? Now you will have to link each of these accounts, okay, by adding them to the accounts from the before sheet to the journal entry sheet, right? For example, cash, okay, is the sum of cash what you had before the time period or at the beginning of the time period, okay, plus whatever changes were undergone during the time period, right? That's captured in the journal entry sheet. So ideally would have to add both of those for all these accounts, right? Okay. So that's what has been done here for each of these accounts. I'm adding, you can see that I'm adding what's in the before sheet with the appropriate account in the journal entries. Again, as in any balance sheet, it's good to have a check, okay, which compares the assets with the liabilities and stockholders equity and can highlight the problem if they do not match, right? The final step would be to create a cash flow statement. In my template here, I've shown it using the direct method and the indirect method. When you create your own template, you can create it the way you want, okay? If you just want to show it in one method, that's fine. But keep in mind that for the direct method, you will have to specify if the cash flow is from an operating activity, investing activity, or a financing activity, okay? So that has to be done here in the journal entry sheet on row four here, okay? You will have to provide what type of activity that is, okay? So all the cash inflows from operating activities are captured here and the cash outflows from operating activities are captured here and so on. So the beginning balance of cash would be captured from the before sheet, okay? From the balance sheet here. And the ending balance should match what is shown in the balance sheet at the end of the period, right? So whatever is shown in the balance sheet here should match with the ending balance. Again, you can create a check here to automatically highlight if this doesn't match. To prepare the cash flow using the indirect method, okay, you start with net income, you add back the depreciation, and you do all these changes to your operational accounts, okay, to calculate the net cash flow from operating activities and so on, right? You will have to track all these changes depending on whether they go under operating activities, investing activities, or financing activities, right? Most of these cash flows are common between the US GAAP and the IFRS, okay, except for a few. For example, whether you pay or receive interest can be considered under uh, operating activities under US GAAP, but under IFRS, okay, whenever you receive interest on an investment, it's considered an investing activity and whenever you pay interest on a loan, for example, it's considered as cash flow from financing activities, okay? This you will have to be careful when you create your cash flow statement, okay? In my template, I put them under operating activities, so any interest earned or any interest paid, okay, would be adjusted under cash flow from operating activities, okay? Again, I have the same check to verify if the ending balance of my cash is the same as what I've shown in the balance sheet here. I'm going to create a separate video with actual examples so you can see how this template functions with the real numbers. If you have any questions or if you run into any trouble when you're creating your own template, feel free to write to me in the comments, okay? And I will try to resolve your problems as soon as possible. Okay, okay next let's move on to the depreciation sheet. So a typical exercise on depreciation looks like this, right? They give you what's the acquisition cost of buying a particular equipment, okay? and if and they also show you what the residual or salvage value is, if at all there is any, okay? And it is also specified what's the useful age of this particular asset, right? Okay. And you might be asked questions like, okay, what's the depreciation using this particular method or what's the net book value as of this particular year, right? Okay, so for this, you would have to create a depreciation schedule, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do in this particular template. I've picked four methods, okay, for which we are going to create the depreciation schedule, okay? The straight line method, the units of production method, the double declining balance method, and the sum of years digits method, 
These last two methods are accelerated depreciation methods, as in you depreciate most of the value as early as possible, right? Okay. Whereas in the straight line method, you depreciate it at a constant rate. For the units of production method, you will need to input the actual production on usage. So in my template, I've highlighted the cells in blue wherever you need to provide your input. Okay. We'll look at the sale part later. Okay. Let's focus on the acquisition part. Okay. You will have to provide the acquisition cost and an estimated salvage value, if any, okay, and an estimated useful life. These three are required inputs for the straight line depreciation method. The straight line method is the easiest one. Okay. How do you calculate the depreciation? You do acquisition cost minus the estimated salvage value, and then you divide that by the estimated total useful life for every year. And then you have a separate column for accumulated depreciation, okay, where you add the depreciation so far, right? So you're accumulating the depreciation so far. And another column which highlights the net book value. So the value of your asset as per your books after subtracting all the depreciation so far. For the units of production method, okay, you will have to provide the actual production or usage here. And you would also have to specify what the total estimated production or usage of that particular asset is. How do you calculate the depreciation expense each period? First, similar to the straight line method, you subtract the salvage value from the acquisition cost. And then you multiply that with the ratio of the actual production for that year, okay, over the total estimated production for its useful lifetime. So for example, if the total estimated production is 100 units, okay, and you produced 30 units in the first year, okay, then you would want to depreciate the asset by 30% in that first year. So that's what you're going to capture in the depreciation expense each year. Okay. And accumulated depreciation and net book value. Okay. You can basically just copy the formula from the, from whatever you use for the straight line method. For accumulated depreciation, you would just add the current year's depreciation expense with the accumulated depreciation until the previous year. To calculate the net book value, okay, you can use either the depreciation expense or the accumulated depreciation in the formula. Okay, you just use the previous year's net book value and subtract the current year's depreciation expense from it. What if the actual production over the years exceeded the total estimated production? Okay, then you will have to stop depreciating any further. Okay, so you will ideally have to create put a check to see if the sum of all this is getting closer to the total estimated production and the moment it exceeds you will have to stop your depreciation at that point so if you want to take a closer look at the formula i have used you can uh, pause this video and you can check the formula bar here okay that's the formula i've used there the reason it looks a little bit more complicated than it should because i also use it to highlight some cells in column f okay depending on how much input is expected so for example, if the estimated useful life is six years, okay, I've done some conditional formatting in the background, okay, to highlight exactly six cells in this particular column, okay, to show that this template expects you to fill the actual production for those six years. Remember I said earlier that in this sheet, blue cells are where your input goes. That's one of the reasons I did this conditional formatting in the background, okay, but you can also keep your template much simpler, right? You don't have to do all these bells and whistles, right? Okay, moving on to the accelerated depreciation methods. Okay, we'll start with the double declining balance. In the double declining balance method, how do you calculate the depreciation expense? You take the net book value at the beginning of that period, okay? And then you multiply it by two and you divide it by the total number of years. As the net book value decreases, you can see that the depreciation expense also decreases with time. Again, the same rule applies similar to the units of production method. The moment you reach the salvage value, you want to stop depreciating any further. I'll demonstrate all this with numerical examples in the next video. You might want to check that out before you purchase this template so you can have an idea of what to expect. Okay. This video is focused primarily to help you make your own template. Then in the final depreciation method, sum of years digits. How do you calculate the depreciation expense for each year? So for example, if the estimated useful life is five years, okay, for the first year you would divide five over the sum of one, two, three, four, and five. So five over 15. 
and in the second year you would depreciate 4 out of 15 and then third year 3 out of 15 and so on right so each year you are depreciating less and less so that's another example of an accelerated method of depreciation so once you created these depreciation schedules okay which can help you show how much the depreciation expenses each year or what's the net book value at the end of a particular year you can also take this a step further to automatically calculate the gain or loss of this particular asset whenever a sale is made the selling price of an asset may not always match the book value of that asset hence you would make an accounting gain or loss and this can vary depending on the type of depreciation you used okay so ideally you would like to get the input of what the selling price of the asset is and when it was sold okay for example you decide to sell it at the end of year 3 okay and then you would have to compare the net book value at the end of year 3 for each of these methods okay against the selling price and then specify whether a gain or loss is made i've done some conditional formatting here to show in green if there is a gain made and to show in red if there is a loss you can do that if necessary or you can just let it be finally we look at how to create a template for inventory management first you will need some cells to take the input of your beginning inventory okay the number of units and the cost per unit and also the various purchases which were made during that time period right you can put in the date here okay it's optional as long as you just fill it in chronological order and you will also have to specify the number of units that were sold if instead you had the ending inventory rather than the number of units sold okay you might have to enter it here and just replace the formula to calculate the units sold our objective is to calculate the cost of goods sold and also provide a valuation for the ending inventory using the three most commonly used inventory valuation methods FIFO, LIFO and weighted average costing method or it's also called as AVCO which is average costing method for FIFO you start considering your inventory top to bottom you compare the units from your beginning inventory against the number of units sold and if it's less than the number of units sold you mark all these units as sold and then you proceed to the next batch which is the first purchase made during the time period right now you subtract your beginning inventory from the unit sold and that you compare it with the purchase made if the purchase made in this particular batch is still less than the number of units yet to be sold okay you would take all of it and keep moving to the next batch okay you can see the formula i've implemented here i've checked what's the minimum of the two okay and then i input that value as the ones that are sold i create a separate column for units unsold which is basically the difference between the column d here and column i here right and then you have the total cost of sold and unsold which you can use to value your cogs and ending inventory for lifo you use the same principle okay but you start from the bottom rather than from the top so for last in first out you start with the latest purchase and you work your way upwards okay to see if the sum of those can add up to the total number of units sold and then you stop right okay so that's what is being implemented here for the weighted average method okay you would have to multiply the total number of units with the cost per unit on each batch okay which will give you the total cost okay and the total cost of all your inventory divided by the total number of units gives you the weighted average cost of each single unit and that unit cost multiplied by the number of units sold will give you the cogs and when you multiply that with your ending inventory number of units it provides you the valuation of your ending inventory for FIFO and LIFO the total cost sold would give you your cogs and the total cost unsold would give you your ending inventory you can create a check for each of these methods so that you can see that the sum of the cogs and ending inventory is equal to the total cost of the available for sale okay this has to always match and this last step is an optional one i've created a reset button which wipes all the input data in this file and makes it ready for the next use right so if you have two exercises you can use it for the first one and then click on this wipe clean button which clears up the file and is ready to use the second time right the reason i have this inbuilt in the file is so that you don't accidentally clear any formula in the cells right all you have to do is click on this button okay this button runs on a macro which i recorded in this file 
So if you choose to purchase this template, the moment you open this file, you will have to enable the macro. If you do not enable the macro, this button would not be able to perform its function. My next video will show you how this template functions with numerical examples. So you can visualize its functionality before deciding if you want to purchase this template or not. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you can create your own template and ace your exams using that. Cheers.